Hey guys, what is going on? I hope you all are doing well today. Elliot here and welcome back to the Fragrance Well. So we're gonna do a 10 out of 10 video today. This is going to be different from any 10 out of 10 or masterpiece video I've done in the past. The reason being is a while ago, I saw Justin Copeland do a video where he basically credited his some of his commenters on uh, convincing them that there's a difference. I don't know if they convinced him or not, but uh, the point is there's a difference between a 10 out of 10 fragrance and a masterpiece fragrance. After kind of hearing that and really thinking about it and also comparing it to a fragrance I actually have on the list today, I actually agree with that sentiment. I think a 10 out of 10 and a masterpiece do not necessarily have to be the same thing. Now I do think a masterpiece fragrance is most likely going to be a 10 out of 10 to some degree, but I don't think it's necessarily a requirement. And also I think if a fragrance is a 10 out of 10, that doesn't necessarily make it a masterpiece. Here's why, in my opinion, a 10 out of 10 fragrance is one that is basically done perfectly uh, with what it has to offer. It's offered in a way that I've, I'm kind of like, I don't really think this needs to change. I used to call that a masterpiece. Uh, the main difference I'm gonna call a masterpiece now is it's gotta maybe have those elements, but it also just kinda has to be a staple and uh, like almost genre defining fragrance or something that just really shakes up the fragrance world overall. So less fragrances have that capability or have that you know in terms of their resume so now a masterpiece with this definition becomes a little bit more rare which is what it should be in the first place but a 10 out of 10 a perfectly done fragrance for what it is i think that's a little bit more attainable so like i said for today's video we're going to do 10 out of 10 fragrances these are perfectly blended fragrances in other words they're just perfect for what they are as a fragrance they may not have had much of a shakeup in the fragrance world overall uh, and I've got nine of them. I hope I didn't say 10 earlier, but I've got nine of them here today and they're gonna be presented in no particular order. So let's go ahead and get the video started. But before we do, as always, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please hit that bell icon and enable notifications so you can be notified when I upload new videos. Let's get into it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get it started. First one, coming from the house of Louis Vuitton. This is Imagination. Louis Vuitton, Imagination. So, as the video states, this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. And this is the fragrance that I mentioned in the intro that basically made me rethink that 10 out of 10 is the same as a masterpiece concept. I kind of uh, used this fragrance to kind of convince me otherwise. And when I bought this scent, it was around the time when Justin Copeland did that video where that was being discussed. I can't remember the exact video, so sorry, I can't really reference it, but it was a while ago. I bought this early summer, maybe late spring or something like that. So anyway, the reason I would say that this is not a masterpiece fragrance is this is not genre defining. It's actually a very simple fragrance. Um, and it's soapy, it's got a tea accord, a lot of ambroxan, that certainly isn't anything new. Really nice ginger, uh, ginger that is kind of synonymous with if there's a ginger accord in a Louis Vuitton fragrance and it's forward, seems like it's pretty you know, standard for Louis Vuitton fragrances, has that Louis Vuitton style to it. But yeah, it's a very simple fragrance. And that's why I say, you know, not really a masterpiece because it's not genre defining. This didn't shake up the fragrance world. It was just a very successful and excellent release. But what I do think is this is a 10 out of 10 because this is masterfully blended, taking very simple fragrance ingredients and blending them in a way that is superior to, you know, any fragrance that may be using some of the same things, in my opinion. Also, a little bit of a soapiness to it. There's some neroli in this, I believe. Uh, like I said, it's tea-centered. And man, it just it's just perfectly blended. I mean, compliment getter, last all day long with all the ambroxan in, that's in here, that shouldn't really be a surprise. But yeah, 10 out of 10 fragrance simply because this is a perfectly blended fragrance, but not quite a masterpiece, just doesn't have that effect on the fragrance community overall, in my opinion. So once again, from the house of Louis Vuitton, this is Imagination. All right, next one is coming from the house of Le Labo, and this is gonna be Tabac 28. Le Labo Tabac 28. Now this fragrance, I would almost call a masterpiece because I think it is that well done, but this is not a scent that's gonna have that kind of effect on the fragrance business overall. But, uh, and it's also, you know, not really a genre defining fragrance. I mean, I would say even the smell is not super unique. I mean, there's been, this is basically rum soaked tobacco, 
a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of spice, some oud in there to just kind of give an extra depth of character to the scent, maybe also playing into the smokiness and a little bit of the sweetness as well. There might be some Cipriol in this too. Uh, and I think this fragrance smells phenomenal. It is outstanding, easily a 10 out of 10. Masterfully crafted juice here, but not really genre defining. So, you know, I don't really give it that masterpiece label anymore since I kind of redefined a 10 out of 10 versus a masterpiece in terms of a, the fragrance world. But yeah, this stuff is wonderful. I would say if you are a fan of tobacco scents, particularly boozy tobacco scents, it's at least worth getting your nose on. This is not gonna be like that compliment getter type of tobacco fragrance. It's just not that type of scent. It's more like a sitting in a cigar lounge, uh, sipping on some really nice scotch or some really nice bourbon or whiskey or something like that. That's kind of the vibe of this fragrance. Those don't necessarily get a lot of compliments, so don't think it's that, but if you're a fan of tobacco fragrances, it's at least worth getting your nose on. So, once again, from the house of Le Labo, this is Tobac 28. All right, guys, we're moving on to the next one, and it's coming from the house of John Varvados, and this is Vintage. John Varvados Vintage. If you're familiar with this fragrance, should it really be a surprise? because given what you can get this for and how good it smells, it's easily a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. This is spice, lavender, uh, a little bit of a suede like leather, some dried woods is probably in here. There's some a little bit of sweetness in this. It's, it's a gentlemanly, it's a little bit of a barbershop style fragrance. It has a little bit of that vintage fragrance vibe, but it is definitely made for the modern man. The fact that this stuff smells this good and you can get it on a discounter in particular for like 30 something bucks, that is a win-win. And this is a 120 milliliter bottle, by the way, so don't forget that. Say what you want about John Varvatos. I'm not a fan of necessarily all of their fragrances, but they have definitely got some very successful concoctions in my opinion. Don't quite consider this one a masterpiece overall, mainly because I think there is another fragrance that they made, and you probably can guess what it is, that I think has a little, had a little bit more of an effect on the community and the fragrance world overall, uh, kind of reached more of the masses, so to speak, but not necessarily a mass appealing scent. I'm just saying it has more reach than this one really does. You kind of have to be a fan of those barbershop style fragrances to really like this or maybe hold it in high regard and th if that makes sense or maybe even call it a 10 out of 10 uh outside of my own opinion but i don't think anybody can deny that this is well blended juice and it smells phenomenal once again from the house of john varvados this is vintage all right next one's coming from the house of wilhelm parfumery and this is going to be morning chess if i can get the bottle straight wilhelm parfumery morning chess now this is one of those ones I called a masterpiece and I am changing it to a 10 out of 10 because like I defined in the intro, masterpiece has a little bit different uh, requirement in my opinion now uh, than a 10 out of 10 does. But this is still easily a 10 out of 10. I mean, this is a simple fragrance that is blended to perfection in my opinion. You got juicy bergamot, not really tart bergamot though. It almost has a smoothness to it. And then that leather and galbanum combination that has kind of a green leathery feel green woody leathery feel i love the way that smells in this and then at the bottom uh there's a kind of a little bit of an earthy patchouli uh and maybe a slight amberiness i think the, there's only like five notes listed for this fragrance i think it's called black amber i don't know what that means i kind of interpret that as it's a darker amber maybe not overly sweet uh but yeah I love the way this stuff is blended and the way it smells. Not quite masterpiece, doesn't really have that overall effect. I mean, this does have a slight relation to uh, Creed Aventus. You kind of have to give that one the masterpiece because it obviously inspired so many great fragrances as well as dupes and clones. So very influential on the fragrance community and market overall, even to this day. But yeah, this stuff is masterfully blended in my opinion and uh it's an easy 10 out of 10 for me so once again from the house of Wilhelm Parfumery this is Morning Chess moving on got one from the house of Nishane and this is going to be Fan Your Flames Nishane Fan Your Flames so another one that just kind of blew my mind as soon as I got my nose on it 
I can't remember if this was a blind buy or not. I might have smelled it beforehand. I've had this for a long time now, so I don't even remember, but that's neither here nor there. Another tobacco fragrance where this one definitely takes a different direction compared to uh, Tobacco 28 that I featured earlier. This is coconut and rum soaked tobacco. So a little bit more festive, a little bit more of that Caribbean like vibe, a little bit drier as well. Doesn't really have as much of the smokiness in my opinion, uh, some cedar wood uh, going into this and man, I love the way this smells like. There might, there might be some oak moss in this too, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, this smells amazing to me, perfectly blended scent. Uh, I use it for far more than maybe most would consider it as a usage fragrance in terms of seasonality as well as occasion. I kind of like to just throw this on whenever I want to and I don't really worry about the occasion. Uh, but yeah, not really a masterpiece. Uh, again, not really a genre defining fragrance. It's good for people who really like it, but this one is one you kind of have to try out. It's definitely not one that's for everyone. I don't know if I can necessarily put it at that masterpiece level. I could personally, and that's another thing about masterpiece fragrance you can have your own personal masterpieces, but I'm kind of stepping away from that for this category. I'm just going to call those 10 out of 10s because then that kind of takes it away in terms of the difference between a 10 out of 10 and masterpiece. If I'm just like, well, it's just my opinion. It's your opinion anyway, but there can be a consensus factor in that masterpiece category. But anyway, this one here, 10 out of 10 easily for me. Once again, from the house of Nishani, this is almost dropped the bottle. Fan your flames. All right, next one's coming from the house of Zerjoff, and this is gonna be Kimmy. Zerjoff, Kimmy. Yeah, there's no way this fragrance is gonna be a masterpiece. It's got too many animalic poopy notes in it. <laughs> so this is a sweet and animalic fragrance. Animalic notes in this are, you know what? I'm gonna spray this. I haven't sprayed. This is definitely kind of a cool weather scent to me. I would wear it in warm weather, but not often. So yeah, I'm gonna spray it real quick. Yep, yeah, listen, as soon as you spray it, those animalic notes come out, man, trust me. <laughs> so again, very sweet, kind of caramel, strawberry flavored sweetness in my opinion. A little bit rich, but not too much. As far as the animalic notes goes, it's yeah, it's, it's got a little bit of that fecal kind of barnyardiness to it. And it, man, it really comes out on the strip. So that's probably one thing that would turn a lot of people off to this immediately. I do think on skin, it's a little bit more balanced. It, uh, the sweetness definitely comes out a lot more on skin, unless you overspray it or if you're smelling it up close, that's when the animalic notes really come out. But I think that balance between the sweetness and the animalic notes is what really makes this fragrance special because the balance is perfect, I, I, in my opinion. I think they literally couldn't have done it any better when it's sprayed on skin. Don't use a tester strip to judge that. Uh, yeah, perfect balance of two very different degrees of styles and notes and accords of perfumery, sweetness versus animalic. You can balance those two together and make it done well. I say that is a great uh, demonstration of some awesome perfumery there because otherwise you could think of it as trying to, you know, spray a sweet uh, air freshener over, you know, a bathroom where someone just did a number two in so you know that's this doesn't smell like that to me which is a good thing that's why i'm giving it the 10 out of 10. once again from the house of zirjoff this is kimmy all right next one's coming from the house of parfum the empire it's ombre russe parfum the empire ombre russe well i would have to say that this is probably my best kind of natural well not natural smelling but Amber fragrance that's not meant to be like super vanillic uh, because I think, excuse me, if you've ever smelled the original Amber fragrance, which I am blanking on the name of it right now, I hate that I'm doing that. I'll, maybe I'll post a picture of it on the screen, but I had did get a sample of that before and I compared it to this and I can see the comparisons as to why uh, this one is definitely uh, taking homage from that original amber style, not the more modern, super sweet, ambery fragrances. Nothing wrong with those, but yeah, this is masterfully blended in my opinion. So like I said, amber fragrance that makes use of a little bit of a sparkliness, uh, a touch of sweetness, but it's not like your typical ambers of today. Uh, there's a little bit of a tea-like accord in this, kind of resinous and green 
chords as well. Uh, a little bit of a cumin-like spice. I don't know if cumin is actually in here. I just get that kind of spice profile, especially when I spray it on skin. That really comes out, and it just has that uh, ombre. Is it ombre for show? I think that's the name of the fragrance. I might be wrong. Please don't, don't come at me if I'm saying it wrong, but I want to say it's ombre for show. You know what? I just looked it up. It is ombre for show because that was going to drive me nuts. So yeah, it has a very nice relation to this. That one I find to be a little bit more cloudy and pillowy, if that makes sense. Almost kind of a... Uh, uh, fluffy, uh, powdery as well. This one's a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit more spicy, a little bit more of a resinous feel to it. Has that tea in there that kind of smooths it out a little bit. But uh, this is one where, you know, you might want to get your nose on it first. I think it's an amazing smelling scent, but it's just not going to be considered that masterpiece style. Number one, it's taking homage from another scent that came before it. And number two, this is not the kind of stuff that people are going to go nuts for in terms of the mass market more of a connoisseur type collector stuff here. But I think it's all awesome fragrance and masterfully blended. Once again, from the house of Parfum de Empire, this is Ombre Russe. All right guys, next one's coming from the house of Day 3 Fragrances, and this is Bonnie. Day 3 Fragrances, Bonnie. Listen, this is my favorite from the house so far, and there are some great ones in the house. There's not one bad fragrance that I've smelled from them. Uh, I just don't necessarily feel like I need to own all of them. But this one was a must have for me because I just think this is the perfect tropical themed vacation style fragrance. Granted, you can wear it outside of a vacation. It doesn't have to be that, but it just does it so well. This is mango papaya with a bit of a green feel to it. I think there's some creamy jasmine in this. Certainly some musk, uh, some like sugary type notes. It is balanced it has a kind of a sea breeze air feel it's almost like you're standing in a like a flower uh garden next to the beach not on the beach just next to it the beach is not far that beach breeze is coming in but you're in a garden of flowers and then it has that tropical mango papaya like fruitiness to it awesome stuff i wore this when i actually went to the dominican republic earlier this year coming off a cruise it was only for a few hours but i was like you know i bought this scent specifically for that stop and listen all i can say is this scent ah, works wonders for me i love a fragrance that can paint a very vivid almost photorealistic picture in my head if i close my eyes and smell it i feel like i'm transported somewhere else this fragrance achieves that with the way i just described 10 out of 10 easily in my opinion once again, from the House of Day 3 Fragrances, we have got Bonnie. All right, guys, and last but not least, coming from the House of Aqua de Parma, this is Fico di Amalfi. Aqua de Parma, Fico di Amalfi. Uh, you know, I could have called this one a masterpiece, but I don't know, in my opinion, it's just not quite there, but perfectly blended and crafted fragrance here. This smells literally like fig water. It is an homage to fig uh, and there's no denying that a little bit of a citrus touch on the top just to give it a little bit of a tanginess but you got the creamy fig you got the watery essence of fig you got a little bit of the fig nectar fig milk kind of smell in there and you can even pick up like hints of the fig wood if you've ever been under a fig tree uh, i would just say if you smell this fragrance and think about that experience it's pretty, well, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say it's pretty accurate, but you can just say it passes. It passes the test of painting that picture in my mind. Uh, was it this year or last year? Last year sometime, uh, I was in Atlanta for my brother's wedding and we were staying at a uh, Airbnb and there happened to be a fig tree, a big one <laughs> in the front yard. And uh, I stood underneath it just to kind of capture the smells of it. The fruit of the fig was ripe, it was bleeding nectar all over the place. The bees and the bugs were going nuts over it. Before we left, my dad, dad must have picked like 25 of them. He's like, I'm not passing this up, man. I'm getting these figs. And let me tell you, they were delicious. And yeah, I could just kind of hintly, uh, just you know, faintly smell all of those smells. And naturally, I thought about this fragrance, came home and smelled it. And I was like, yeah, they, they did a pretty good job with this. But yeah, not quite a masterpiece in my opinion. I get, you know, it is a staple, it is a classic, but I don't know if I'd call it a masterpiece, but definitely 10 out of 10. I'm not saying it's the best fig fragrance in the world, but it's a darn good one. So once again, from the house of Aqua de Parma, this is Fico di Amalfi. 
All right, guys, that is gonna do it for this video. That was nine, 10 out of 10 fragrances in my opinion. Let me know down in the comments below, what are some 10 out of 10 fragrances you have in your collection? I'm sure you got some stuff that's different from what I presented here today. Looking forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Thanks again for watching all the way until the end. I really do appreciate you guys. Please remember to be well and smell well, and I will see you in the next episode of The Fragrance Well. Have a good one.